You know that weird, creepy neighbor who shuffles up to knock at your door late at night? That's how a lot of people see science. <laughs> I would rather you saw science as that interesting friend down the street who you wanted to ask over for a cup of tea to help you solve a problem. I'm a geologist. I've spent several years studying a very specific style of question, observation, and analysis. I use a precise vocabulary, and I say things like, Albuquerque is situated within the Rio Grande Rift, a tertiary-aged north-south continental extensional feature. I could also say that Albuquerque is built in the Rio Grande Rift. A rift is the name for a geologic feature that forms when two parts of the crust stretch apart, getting thinner and thinner, stretching and sagging down like taffy, forming a long and narrow basin. Now, both of these descriptions are correct. However, I imagine the second, more visual description resonated with more of you. Here's what I want you to go away with tonight. One, that science is everywhere. Two, science isn't scary. And three, you can relate to and apply science on a daily basis. So to start thinking about this, does this sound like you? You're either a scientist with a capital S or a non-scientist. You either love science and science experiments or not so much. And you either love math and think it's wonderful or you hate all math things. <laughs> if you're nodding, you're not alone over here. There are many, many people who are leery of asking science over for a cup of coffee in a chat. But the thing is, everyone in the globe is affected by technology or uses science on a daily basis. And in turn, we all have the opportunity to shape how that future of science and technology are applied. I grew up in northern New Mexico. My paternal family is from the tiny village of Las Truchas. I went to middle and high school in Los Alamos, where my maternal grandfather had worked in the Manhattan Project. As such, I was born into a fusion of rural heritage and high-performance science. And I think in this time of kind of growing global mistrust of science or, or unsurety about science, that that's kind of a unique perspective to have. When I was little, I grew up pretty wild, running through the mountains. Uh, I herded cattle on horseback. I learned to drive on a tractor. And every spring, we started our year by cleaning out the acequias, or the irrigation ditches that were so important to our fields. The village of Las Truchas, for th over 300 years, has existed in a subsistence farming lifestyle. And it's a community of tiny hay fields perched on mountainsides and nestled in valleys. In a topography that is high elevation, it's rugged, and it's forested. Now, water doesn't flow uphill to these hay fields. And to address this, farmers constructed a network of acequias to deliver water to the community's fields. This landscape is scored by steep, narrow canyons. So in order to ensure that the water was delivered field after field after field, farmers constructed trestles over which they laid canalejas, or culverts, carved historically out of hollowed out tree trunks joined together to span the canyons. One of my favorite things to do as a child was to scamper up these trestles and find out where the water was dripping from failing joints. 
in the instance of a you know, failed joint due to age or a, a trestle beam being damaged in a spring flood or in more than one instance by a hungry beaver's appetite, <laughs> my dad and my grandpa would engineer a replacement piece. And as a 10-year-old Juarita in northern New Mexico, I was awed and inspired by this ability to seemingly control water, growing potential, and building materials. I didn't know quite how to verbalize it, but what I was seeing was science applied to a farming problem. I didn't see this uh, engineering or hydraulic science as something that required a specialized education or a shiny science badge in order to participate in. It was simply something that was necessary. It was fun. And most important, it was a fun challenge to solve better each time. In Los Alamos, I had the opportunity to work as a field assistant for a geologist. We were mapping in the Valles Caldera, and over the summers we worked together, I progressed from, I'm here in case you break your ankle, to a geology protege, making my own field maps, identifying minerals, and the like. I had this science moment one day when we were mapping the resurgent domes which are the lumpy hills in the middle of that via. Right? These hills are formed by eruption after eruption after eruption of lava piled up on top of each other. And one day we were hiking along the top flow of one of these peaks, hiking along, hiking along, hiking along, when we came face to face with this impenetrable forest. It was matted, it was tumbled down, it was filled with thorns, it was awful. And no matter how we tried, we were forced to go downhill to get around it. Now this was bad news for us because that meant we had to hike right back up that mountain we had just hiked that morning, but this time with our backpacks full of rocks. <laughs> As we were huffing and puffing up the hill, my mentor you know, managed to gasp out that he felt that we were battling the old forest from the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and I agreed, but more importantly, I had this lightning moment where I thought, my goodness, this volcanologist, this capital S scientist, is talking to me about fantasy fiction. Not only do I dearly love Lord of the Rings, but we're making a connection here. If we can talk about hobbits and possessed forests, maybe this science thing isn't so bad. <laughs> As it turned out, I progressed from art major to geologist, and I changed my career. So I connected into the world of science through the land of hobbits. What I would ask is, how do you connect to science? How can you get into a conversation with that science neighbor down the street? So for a moment, think about something that you're really good at or that you really love. Now, think about gathering up some courage taking a deep breath, and inviting science over for a cup of coffee. Find out where the conversation between you guys goes both ways. Do you both ride bikes? Science. You both like Tom Petty? Rock on, science. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, you like to knit, patterning, thread tension, you and science can knit all night long. As you go about initiating and participating in what must grow to be a two-way 
applied science and creative thought process conversation. Remember, if you will, that you're doing so in one of the most awesome and diverse geologic locations in the entire globe. I am not kidding. New Mexico is the perfect place to open the door to that quirky neighbor, ask science on in, blend ideas, collaborate, and realize that the power of our joined potential far outweighs that of our individual contributions if we are able to be brave enough to bridge that divide. <laughs>